GPDMA part. We want to have a look on the new or not so new peripheral. It's a similar peripheral as is on U5, but it's still quite new compared to previous STM32 devices. So we have some overview of the peripheral, then have a look how the example we will use will work. Then uh, we will use some example with the ADC and uh, UART uh, using the linked list item controlled uh, GPDMA. Then have some conclusion and then in the cheat sheet there is some additional steps you can play with. So, so to have a quick overview of the DMA. So it's a new DMA uh, and uh, on the H5 there are two hardware instances, so there are two DMA controllers. It has integrated the DMA MOOCs features, so you can map any request to this uh, DMA and it allows uh, linked list uh, based programming, so you can have uh, like a sequence of uh, different transfers and this is what we will demonstrate in the hands-on. And of course, the main uh, benefit is that we offload the CPU and can do some independent uh, transfers. So quick look on the bus. So here we have a comparison with the F4. So on the left side, we have uh, two DMAs. So you can see, for example, in this case, DMA1 was connected to some peripherals. The DMA2 is connected to another set of uh, peripherals on the H5. We have two instances, but they are basically uh, the same. They have the same configuration. They can access the same peripherals. So it's up to you how you split the load between them if it's uh, needed. And uh, both have uh, two ports that's uh, similar as on the F4. So usually the port one is uh, more suitable for accessing the memories and uh, port zero is more suitable for accessing the peripherals, but it's up to you how you configure it. We uh, can support the different type of transfers from peripheral to memory, memory to peripheral, memory to memory, or even peripheral to peripheral. We can also do some autonomous data transfer during the sleep mode. Each controller has uh, eight uh, concurrent DMA channels, so inside the controller we can have eight different transfers happening. So compared to U5, in U5 we had uh, one DMA controller with 16 channels. Here we have two controllers with eight channels, so it allows more uh, concurrent things happening at the, at the same time. And we have priority between the different channels and we have basically four levels uh, with the last one being sort of a real time priority. So that will block any other transfers. Inside the GPDMA, we can also do some data handling so we can do some reordering of the bytes or some padding, uh, sign extensions. Uh, so that can be useful when you copy data from one peripheral to another, but there is some a little bit alignment of the data or something like that. All the channels support the linear addressing mode, so we increase the, we can fill some part of uh, memory and uh, two channels in each controller supports so-called 2D addressing mode, so you can basically skip some part of the data. So this could be used uh, like in graphics when you copy some picture, but it can have uh, many different uh, usages. And in the cheat sheet later on, the, this one is used for uh, sorting the data. So we will use this linked list mode. So basically it's uh, like a structure in the memory, which contains the configuration for each transfer. And then we have another part of memory that contains another transfer. So inside this structure, we have uh, the values of uh, different registers and at the end we have the linked list uh, register that can point to another item. So here is the overview of the GPDMA structure. So we have uh, some DMA requests. So 
that's uh, when the peripheral that is uh, sending or accepting the data notifies us that it's ready. We can have some triggers, so we can trigger the transfer on some event. And here the slave age B bus for uh, register configuration, the master ports for accessing the bus matrix. Maybe one more interesting thing, it uh, contains also the security and privilege management. So you can configure some DMA channels to be secure or privileged or non-secure, non-privileged, and they can have some restricted uh, access to some memories or peripherals. So there is some overview. Again, we have uh, eight channels. Some of the channels have small FIFO size because uh, for most cases it's not necessary to have a big FIFO and some other channels have as a larger one. So it's up to you if you need a larger FIFO, you use different uh, channel number, but you can assign any peripheral to any channel you want. Okay, so we will use ADC1 to convert port channels in the continuous mode and we will generate the DMA requests. We will also use uh, USART3 to send the obtain data to the terminal on the PC. And uh, we will use timer 15 to trigger the transfer. We will use the linked list mode, so we will rotate between these uh, different transfers. So the reason to trigger with the timer uh, 15 is that we want to reduce the data we sent over the UART because if we would be running in the continuous mode, we would overload the terminal and we wouldn't see anything and it might also crash on our PC. And also we can demonstrate this uh, trigger feature, which I think is also quite nice. Here's how it uh, works. So at the beginning, we will load the configuration of the node one from the linked list. So here we have two transfers in the linked list. And once it's loaded, it will wait for the trigger from the timer 15. Once it received trigger from timer 15, it will start based on the request from ADC1. It will start uh, transmitting data to the memory of the different channels. We will have it uh, sequentially in the memory. Once this transfer is finished, the GPDMA uh, will load from the memory the next configuration for the registers. And then it will start the transfer to the UART3. And it will send the same data to the USART3. Then it should go back to the beginning and again load the GPDMA node 1. Again, I will switch to the Cube IDE. So I will close this uh, project and start a new one. So I will again start with the board selector and I will uh, And I will again select yes to initialize the peripherals. Okay, so we have the project uh, generated. So let's start with the ADC configuration. Here we already have some channel preselected, but that's for USB C. So we will not use that, but we will select uh, channel 0, uh, channel 2 in single ended mode channel 6 and channel 13 so just four channels that are available on the board to use it for the conversions then we will in the configuration we will enable the continuous conversion mode so we don't need to time the adc to start the conversion it will convert uh, continuously the same for the DMA to enable the continuous requests. And we will also enable the low power auto wait. So basically when the DMA doesn't read the data, the ADC will stop and it will not overflow. Yeah, and here we need to configure the sequence. So here we will select four. So we will convert the four channels we uh, selected.
for each uh, for each rank we will select the different channel. So zero to then six and finally the thirteen. One more thing I will do is change this prescaler to eight. So this should result in some reasonable clock frequency for the ADC. It seems to work even with the two, but it's uh, out of the out of the specification and also one of the things we will probably fix in the future release. Okay, so now we will configure the DMA. So I tell us to go to the GPDMA one. So we go there. Here I will select the channel six in linked list mode. So for this hands-on itself, we could use other channels as well, but later in the cheat sheet. So we don't have time to do it there, but in the cheat sheet, there are some examples that use the 2D addressing. So that's why we select uh, this one. And here we will select the execution mode as circular. OK, and I think that's all for uh, there. Then I will go to the timer, uh, timer 15, uh, select internal clock source. Now I will uh, select the timing, so we will want to generate event each second. So for the prescaler, I will select uh, 50,000 minus one. So like that and for the counter period it's uh, 5000 minus one and in the trigger event selection i select the update event otherwise you wouldn't trigger the transfer so then we should uh, configure the uart but here it's done from the board itself so we don't need to change uh, anything and in the utilities we will configure the linked list for the dma so i click here to add a new list i click here back on the queue name to configure the queue parameters and i change it to circular and here i need to enter the name of the first note in the loop which should be your uh, note name so it's this one that is already there so now i change to this one and here i will configure the parameters and uh, so first we will select the request so this one it should be adc1 then we will in the channel configuration we will use peripheral to memory we are reading data from the adc for the source uh, data we will select half word because we have a 12 bit adc so 16 bit half word we will read and we don't increment the address we are still reading from the same register uh, for the destination settings, we will select the incrementing because we will fill a buffer in the in a RAM. And again, we select a half word size. And for the trigger, we will select the request on rising edge and we will select the timer 15, which is uh, at, at the bottom of the select list. And uh, this configuration we leave at the default. And now we select the runtime configuration. So this is basically a code that is pasted by CubeMX. So this one, I will, for the source address, I will use the data register of the ADC. And for the data, I will use some variable we will define in the code. And for data size, we will use 64 times 2. So uh, this data size is in bytes. So we will transfer 64 samples. 
but each sample has two bytes. Now we need to add the second node. So here I click the add node. At the top, I will rename it to your node name two. In the request, I will now select the USART3TX. So we will send the data to the PC. In the channel configuration, I will select memory to peripheral. We are sending the samples we got from ADC, so we will transfer from SRAM to peripheral. So source uh, data setting we increment because we are in the memory, but we leave the byte size. So now we will send the data per byte. The destination address we don't increment and leave the byte size. And uh, we just configure the runtime configuration. We again read from the data. And uh, we write to the USART uh, data register. And again, we will send the same amount of bytes. So again, it's 64 times 2. We got some issues with the with the cubemix here so the workaround is quite simple i just close the ioc file and i open it again because there was some i know that we faced some issues when we didn't do it then the code generated was uh, wrong so yeah and i can i just generate the code Here I will go to the linked list uh, C file and uh, modify there the pointer to the data we will use in the main C file. I put the uh, include for the linked list and I uh, I define some uh, variables at the in this main file, we will start the transfer. Yeah, I think that's all. So here we call the function generated by the linked list utility to initialize it. Then we configure it to the GPDMA1 uh, channel 6. Then here we do some trick to enable the DMA transfer for the UART and enable it. And then we start the DMA, start the ADC, and finally start the timer 15. So now this should uh, send some data over the UART to the, to the PC. So I now have some jump wires on the channels. So I should see some different uh, values. But okay. So I can see that each second I receive some data from the ADC. So basically without CPU doing anything, I can periodically send some data over the UART to the COM port. So we had a look how the GPDMA is implemented on the H5. We summarized some, some of the key features and we demonstrated that we can do some autonomous uh, data transfer without the CP load and briefly introduced the link list based uh, programming. Of course, if you want to use the let's say regular uh, DMA transfers like the normal mode or circular mode from the old STM32s, so you can do it and it's in the Cubemix, uh, you can configure it without uh, need to configure the linked list. What's next? So we already shared the link with the cheat sheet and then there is some additional steps. You can more evolve this uh, example that you can do, some, for example, some data sorting. So now the data were in order that there is uh, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, and again channel one for each sample. And you can reorder it so you have all samples from channel one, then all samples from channel two, and so on. 
you can do some more advanced uh, data manipulation. Yeah, so this is basically described here. So you sort the values from different channels to have it separately in different buffers. And the other demonstration is that you can generate some events at the end of the transfer. So you can toggle the LED when, when the transfer is finished. 